Hey friendos, my name is Nez and welcome back to Near Replicant. Last episode, we saved the Prince of Facade and got a few more sealed verses. And now we're back at our village to go see how Yona is doing. Yona, we have returned after a huge adventure. Maybe we could finally introduce you to Kaine. What is this? 700 gold! And the defense drop. Yona, how are you doing? Hi, hello. The shaman fish worked. Nice. Um, I don't think we can. We have to go actively look for a cure for you. Sure, I'll stay. I can today. Oh no! We're being made to choose. Of course we'll stay. What's one day? We gotta make sure we spend as much time as we can with our ill sister. We never know when she'll go. And there we go! A nice slice of life day, where we just hang out with our sister. I hear a voice. I squint and see a boy standing before me. His hair is silver, his skin is pale, and he stares up at me with hard glassy eyes. Soon his lips begin to move, but no sound comes out. What is he saying? I can't hear him, I can't hear him. I can't hear him, I can't hear him. I try to leave, but something about the boy holds my gaze. I watch his face expressionless as his lips slowly flutter. What is he trying to say? Wait, it's a phrase. I can almost make it out. It starts with an S and then there's an E. I can almost see it now. The letters begin to fall together, one after the other, faster and faster. Sealed verse. It's a sealed verse! The thing I'm looking for, the key to saving my sister! I stare at the boy with renewed ferocity, trying to desperately make out the next word. Dream. Dream? What? What the hell does that mean? The lips move again, faster now. I can't follow them. Damn it, I can't make it out. I want to scream. I want to tear the walls down around me, but instead I force myself to be calm. I can do this. I can do it for Yona. Slowly, ever slowly, I parse out the letters to make up the final words. Forest. Of. Myth. Okay then, I guess we know where we're going next. The next morning! Hopefully, Yona's feeling better. Yume. Just a dream, huh? Are we 100% sure that was a dream? Yona! How you doing? Good morning to you two. We were talking to a strange boy and he told us to go to some dank forest. Wait, what? Wait, did we have the same dream? We had the same fucking dream. Well, that dumb game is probably gonna save your life. We definitely had the same dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just setting up death flags. 
Nothing suspicious about that. Forest of Myth. I think that should be on the map. Yeah, let's go ask Popola. She definitely might know something about the Forest of Myth. She is our woman in the chair. She's the one that guides us and gives us all sorts of miscellaneous tasks. Then again, she does lead us to a ton of sealed verses. But let's see what she has to say. What does she know about the forest of myth? Popola. Hello, hello. Hi. Did you get another love letter? Dearest Popola, I hope this letter finds you well. I am writing in hopes of bringing to your attention a certain dream issue of concern regarding recent events in Dream the Village. I was hoping I might be dream able to get your advice to dream on the matter. Wait, 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 what? Recently there have been dream reports, dream, dream, dream of a certain dream, 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 dream. Okay. Uh... What an absolute coincidence! Yeah, me too. Well, we'll be on our way then. Now, where do we go? I think it's either north or east. Let's check our map. Okay. Heading to the forest of myth. Why is it called so? Are there dragons there? Can we finally meet dragons? We've met a bunch of robots, we've met a bunch of shades. Is there a shade dragon that lives there? How far do we have to go? All the way there. We should probably call our piggy companion. Piggy companion? Wherefore art thou? Ah, there he is. Oh no, we also called the sheep. We might as well ride. Ride, piggy companion, ride! And the forest should be way over here. This way? Aha! We almost made it! That was embarrassing. Ooh, a new area! And there's a person, and a bunch of houses made out of stumps. Very fantastical. Let's see what kind of bullshit goes on here. <laughs> Why hello there, good sir. Why are you just out here? Oh, you're the mayor. Is that why you wrote that strange letter with dream, 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 dream? Uh, Chungus, what's happening? His voice rose in a quizzical way. Wait, what the hell? The villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his eyes? The mayor stared at Nez and Chungus. The mayor explained. 
In the past weeks, a mysterious disease called the Death Dream has spread across the forest of myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world within their dreams. The village mayor had determined that the Death Dream had spread from person to person by spoken words, but before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. Uh, why is the text getting bigger? Are we still asleep? Before the mayor could confirm Neza's suspicion, Chungus exploded with rage. I do. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the subject to who Nez had seen, and what they had discussed since coming to the village. Yeah, maybe it was the word dream? Nez and Chungus racked their brains but could find no easy solutions. There were simply too many words to consider, too much random chatter, too much meaningless conversations. The mere suggestion that Chungus chose his words carelessly seemed to sting his pride. Oh, whoa, there's a narrator now? Are we the narrator? Irritated, Chungus looked skyward as if searching for answers in the heavens. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to Nez like a contagion. Wait, said Nez suddenly, did someone say contagion? Yes, I believe so, what of it? Well, that villager told us to watch for contagious words, right? The mayor leaned forward with renewed interest, pushing his startled Chungus aside in the process. He must have said something, right? asked the mayor. Some specific combination of words, what was it? It was about dreaming, or something that dreams, or... Oh, what the hell was it? A sheep! cried Chungus suddenly, blurting out the first thing that popped into his head. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. After a few more minutes of thought, Nez's face suddenly lit up. I remember, he said. Those who dream, that's what he said, I'm sure of it. At this, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of papers from his pocket. He flipped through them a few times before finally nodding his approval at Nez. That sounds right, he said, as a stray sheet of paper fluttered to the ground. My notes also mentioned something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head, his worn pencil stub tracing lines across the lone piece of paper. For the last month, I've done nothing but study the disease that we call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect people from whatever comes along, but I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused, a grimace crossing his face. I should probably be taking notes or something. Chungus immediately fired back. I applaud the force of will it takes to research a disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should bend your efforts to escaping this place instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping off the tip. I've tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream, I've been looking for a way out. But I don't think that exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there was an exit, I would know about it. He paused for a moment, his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people he could ever hope to meet. But once this disease took hold, things changed. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked out all the color out of our lives. I just want us to be whole again, I just want to be free. And I won't stop trying until it happens. Nez nodded in agreement. Huh? Wait a second, I did not. Look, if we could be of any help, said Nez, just ask. Now hold on, I did not just say that. Silence, cried Chungus. The Grimoire looked from Nez to the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. Grimoire Chungus' face is always confident, thank you very much. Now see here, mayor, you told us that nothing can exist in this dream without you knowing of it. But yet you seemed surprised to see us when we first arrived, yes? The mayor slowly raised his head, realization dawning on his face. Oh my god, he said. You're right, you're right. I had no idea you were coming. The human imagination is a limitless engine, said Chungus, and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, there must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. 
Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. The mayor suddenly felt as if he could breathe again. He'd almost forgotten what it was like. Good luck, you two, he called at the departing forms of Nez and Chungus. We're all counting on you. As Nez slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck with a sense of deja vu. I saw this man once before, he thought. But where? Nez's mood darkened as he trudged through the forest. Oh, this is a whole text adventure! Yokotaro, you madman! Hours earlier, when the beauty of the place was still a new thing, he'd been confident that we could get in, find an exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more forest closed in around him. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss-covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once, he'd been forced to steady himself on the rough bark of a tree, and his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Chungus was proving to be a spectacularly poor traveling companion. Unhindered by either terrain or physical effort, he spent most of his time urging Nez to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Chungus muttered something about legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, Nez snapped. Okay, Chungus, cram it for a second with you. You don't have to walk. Nez leaned against a tree and tried to stretch the knots from his back. How can this stupid forest be so big, he muttered to himself. The moment the words tumbled from his mouth, a cacophony of insects sprang to life. Every imaginable form of buzz, click, and hiss roared out of a volume that rattled his teeth. Nez slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard. Chungus, what's going on? Nez could see that Chungus' mouth was moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects screamed, the forest howled. And then, just as Nez's ears seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed the hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Zree, zree, zree! Shock, shock, shock! Chick, chick, chee, chick, chick, chee, chick, chick, chee! Woo, 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 ma! Woo, 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 ma! I don't know what any of these sounds are! As the insect symphony dimmed another decibel, Nez began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's not just white noise, it's something else. The insects weren't just calling out, they were asking a question. One with it is lacking. Two with it is ideal. Three with it is dangerous. What is it? By my pages, is this a riddle? I guess so. I mean, it sort of feels forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. Then I leave it to you to answer. One with it is lacking. Two with it is ideal. Three with it is dangerous. What is it? The answer is... A uh, secret, maybe. Inwardly furious that Chungus left the task to him, Nez sighed and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret. Um, right? The sound of the insects stopped as suddenly as it began. The forest undergrowth parted before Nez like a rippling wave opening a new path. It's an actual text adventure. These forest arthropods are making a road for us, said Chungus with glee. Pleased at passing the test, Nez moved on with new intensity. The path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind. As long as they were on the path, their journey had purpose. I guess the forest had accepted us, huh? Said Nez after a bit. Chungus spun around to face his companion. Do not mistake the will of the forest for some happy path you could suddenly befriend. We have no idea where this path leads. As Chungus finished speaking, the pair turned the corner and found themselves facing a clear forest spring. Smiling, Nez picked up a small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Good heavens, said Chungus. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. When the rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of the spring, the ripples it left behind came together to form words. I enter through the window but break no glass. When the night falls, I vanish. What am I? Absurdly easy, barked Chungus. Now answer it. Nez grit his teeth and tried not to reach out and strangle his companion. He's right after all, this one is pretty easy. The sun, easy! I enter through the window but break no glass, when the night falls I vanish, what am I? A bird, a letter, sunlight. Sunlight! We will go with sunlight. A plume of water suddenly burst from the spring. Sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, said Chungus softly. I have never seen such a sight. Perhaps I have misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look, cried Nez, awaking Chungus from his daze. There's a house or something over there. 
Glancing in the direction of his friend's extended hand, Chungus saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. That's weird, isn't it, Chungus? I mean, who would build a house all the way out here? Nez walked over and pounded on the door. After a minute of solid banging, the door crackled open and small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large black cape, while his face was obscured by the mist. Um, began Nez, but before he could get any further, the cloaked man held up a hand and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but end the night with three. What am I? Nez tried to ask the cloaked man who he was and what he was doing there, but he simply repeated the question. If we wish to engage this man in conversation, said Chungus, it seems we must answer his riddle. Yeah, I suppose, said Nez. Well, at least it's an easy one, right? I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but end the night at three. What am I? A man, a demon, an angel. Wait, what? Absolutely none of these make sense. A man, a demon, an angel. I guess we just guess? A man. The mist dissolved from the cloaked figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. Wait, what? With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. I you're the mayor, cried Nez. The small man slowly shook his head. I am not the mayor, you know. Now listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a version of you that was not yourself. I'm sorry? What does that mean? It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the person at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him. As Nez watched, mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from existence. When Nez and Chungus returned to the forest entrance, they found the mayor leaning against a tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over to them. Good gravy, he cried. You made it! You actually made it back! His left hand grasped Nez's and pumped it so fiercely it threatened to dislodge him from his socket while his right seized Chungus by the cover and swung him into the air. Gah, by the heavens, stop shaking me, fool! We have not even told you if we were successful or not! The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive! I didn't think I'd ever see you again! Nez withdrew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the Death Dream seal, he said. At least, I think we did. The mayor's face beamed as Nez filled him on the details. When the tale was done, the three of them lay down in the forest ground and fell asleep. Nez cocked his head. Okay, hang on a second, this is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? Cease your endless prattle and go to sleep, fool. Fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. Nez and the mayor beat him, he reclined atop the grassy earth. Have you forgotten, continued Chungus. It is words that control the death dream, words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, this story will continue. And with that, the trio found their eyes growing heavy, their breath slowing. This is the first time, began the mayor, the first time I ever felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were cut off by a loud long yawn and he remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they awoke, things had a slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt thicker, the leaves greener. It was clear that they had awakened from their dream. We shook the mayor's shoulder gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh, wow, said the mayor in an odd voice. We did. I'm back. He blinked once and then again, as if quite not believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. The death dream was spreading through our village and I wanted to. Well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it, but I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and become trapped in my own dream. The mayor started to stand, then collapsed back to the earth. He stared at his legs as if trying to remember how they worked then glanced at Nez and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said the mayor as a wry smile crossed his lips. You shall relearn in short order, I'm sure, said Chungus. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor, swaying on his unsteady feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in the death dream. I have to save them. The mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village, then bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained when the prayer was finished. It's the guardian of our village's history and memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder, muttered Chungus. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head. Not the gods, the words. Legend says that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as a sealed verse. Oh ho ho, okay. 
Nez and Chungus could not contain their surprise. It seemed the goal had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, muttered Chungus, this is certainly a stroke of luck. As the three of them said their goodbyes, Nez mentioned the strange man who had given them the third riddle and the mysterious words he left them with. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, muttered the mayor. What in the world does that mean? Lost in thought, he stared into space for a long time. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I've seen you before too. Nez tried to keep a straight face and failed, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figure there's some kind of illusion created by the death dream. It probably doesn't mean anything. Nez gave the mayor a nod and a smile, but inwardly his thoughts were racing. There is something wrong about the mayor and his words. And what exactly is going on here? That riddle would prove to be the most difficult one of all. We made it out of the text adventure! Yes, caused by words! But then again, if we think about it, sealed verses are technically words of power, right? We have obtained the sealed verse! Nice! Dark execution! Summon magical spikes from the ground to impale enemies? Oh, that was my favorite! We finally have it! Let's equip it. Dark Execution. And then we put some edits on it. Magic. Uh, Here we go. Execution. Well, that was a bunch of reading. You mean the boy we saw in our dream? Okay then! Sure! We did it! But... Hmm... I think these people are side quests that we can help out to also escape the dream. We'll come back to them later. Can we go inside the tree? No, we can't. Okay! This is a tiny area. But the gimmick is, it's a text adventure area. Not a combat area. Very interesting. Okay, we're done here. Let's head back home. Let's go see Yona. Although I am concerned. She also met the boy in the dream. I wish she didn't get sucked in by the death dream. Yona, we have returned from the Forest of Myth. We didn't even need to fight anything over there. Let's save. Okay, now let's return back to Popola to report on what we saw. Because if anything happened to our village, and it got consumed by some sort of dream disease, I don't know what would happen. We can certainly protect ourselves from shades, but I don't think we can protect ourselves from... a mysterious dream-born disease. Our poor Yona would have yet another disease to worry about. And that would just be mean. But knowing Yokotaro, hmm, I wonder. Anyway, hi, hello, Popola. Yeah, it shoved us into a text adventure. Yes, we're working so hard for the sake of our little sister. Yeah, is there anything we can do for you? Prepare the canal. Prepare the canal. Sounds like something we can do. もちろん。遠慮せずに行って。ありがとう。水路の整備をお願いしていた人がここ数日仕事に来ていなくてね。心配だから海岸の町まで様子を見に行ってほしいのよ。They're at seafront, right? 家の場所は地図に書き込んでおくわね。いつも赤いカバンを身につけているから行けばわかるはずよ。うん。
Okie dokie, we got our next quest. We're gonna try to help repair the canals for trade and then... I don't know. Something about this makes me feel like we're gonna run into another shade and another sealed verse. Just a gut feeling. Right. I mean, we do have boats, right? We're just gonna save. Right now, Popola is sending us on a mission to Seafront to go look for a guy to help repair the canals. We need those for trading! We must strengthen the diplomatic bonds between Seafront and our village. That way, we could get a ton more wares. This village is kinda old. It could use some sprucing up, maybe some upgrades, and a trade route would be great for that. Let's just head over the southern gate and then head over to Seafront. And here we are, yet again, at the village by the sea. Now who do we look for? Are we looking for you? Ah, the person with the red bag! Hi, hello! Popola told us to look for you! You seem to be in trouble. That certainly does sound like a problem. Let me guess, you're gonna make it our problem as well. If there's anything we know about lost women in this game is that they end up dead. Well, I guess we don't have a choice. うん。奥さんの行方に思い当たる場所はないの<笑> Public display of affection, how disgusting! And I'm guessing we're gonna find it on her corpse. Yeah, this definitely does not bode well for the wife. So, where could she be? We should ask around the tavern. Hello, hello. Ah, hi! Do you have a red bag? You are not the woman with the red bag. There's something red behind you, but I think that was a debate. あら、あの夫婦また喧嘩したの？こっち角路はここに顔を出していないから居場所は知らないな。そうね。釣り具屋に行ってみたらどう？そこの奥さんとよく世間話をしているみたいだから。わかりました。あなた、よく見ると可
Because Yokotaro. Yokotaro! Let's see, where could she have gone? I mean, this is a pretty short road, leading all the way back to the village. She has to be somewhere. Did she happen to go inside that big mansion? We haven't gone there yet. I mean, we could try investigating. There's no X mark on the map. So I guess we just investigate. Is there a way to go through here? No, it's locked up. Oh, we could go in. Oh! Wait, we got attacked! We're poison! Gotta use some weed! We got ambushed on our way in! Is this proper place? Not quite sure. Checking the map? Maybe we should check outside first. She has to be somewhere. Where could she have gone? We'll go back there later once we exhaust all the other places. She left town. Where did she go? Oh! Okay, there we go. That's a scripted event. I mean, I kind of have the suspicion that shades are just people. Don't tell me that's the wife. Oh my god, that was the wife! She turned into a shade! Yeah, she was definitely dead. Or most likely, she turned into shade. Hi, hello, your wife died? Nothing we could do? Well, that's deeply unfortunate, but expected. Highly expected. We all know what happens to lost wives in this game, and it's not a happy thing. What are we gonna tell the husband? Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Guy we need help from. We know you're in a psychologically bad state, but we're just gonna tell you your wife died from being attacked by a shade. Or even worse, your wife turned into a shade. What do we tell him? Maybe we should just tell him that his wife uh, went on a vacation. Yeah, that's it. She went somewhere far, far away. <laughs> Yeah, about that. You handed over the red bag. Oh no, he's crying! Do we just ask the man or leave him be? Uh, we need your help with something, by the way. Oh, we're gonna ask him about his wife. Yeah, we'll just wait for you to calm down. Ah, oh, hello. Oh, she's alive! We got jabated! Our expectations have been subverted yet again! <laughs> that was a happier ending than I thought! We got tricked! We got bamboozled! I mean, it's a logical conclusion. You think she left because of a fucking apple? 
I don't think she even ran away from home. But we need to ask him to help build the canal! Should we get out of here, stick around and listen? Suddenly remember that other important errand, yeah! I guess we're sticking around regardless. Oh my god, they're actually gonna split up right in front of us. Why are you making us choose? Who's in the wrong here? The wife who lost the bag? The husband who ate the apple? It's just a fucking apple, but the anniversary bag is kinda... It kinda has more significance. No, we're just saying... Why are we involved in this? Oh, you're bringing out the pussy pass. Okay. Yeah, that is totally not what we meant. Okay, these two are definitely getting a divorce right in front of us. You're still asking us! Who's in the wrong here? Uh, the husband? The wife? Honestly, both of you. Your public display of cringe is disgusting! <laughs> they called Chungus a magazine? That was a burn. That's a burn I'm gonna remember for a while. One hour later! Oh no, they're actually gonna break up. Yeah, we can't stay here for another hour. Friendos, maybe you should just talk things out. Yeah, that's what we came here for. And somehow they're back in good moods. What the hell is going on with these two? Jesus Christ! We needed someone to fix the canals! What do you mean? Yeah, hi, hello? Holy shit, we're never playing marriage counselor ever again. I think this is a good time to end for now. If you friendos enjoyed this episode of Me Replicate, leave your comments down below, like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to always stay up to date with our videos. Until our next episode of Me Replicate, my name is Nez and thanks for watching. See you all next time. Bye friendos!